Welcome to the series, The Fundamentals of Programming for Game Development and AI. My name is Horat Scarlett, and I'm the current program director for the Bachelors of Science in Game Development and the Bachelors of Science in Applied Artificial Intelligence right here at UTEC Jamaica. I have been a seasoned educator for over 20 years, so let's jump into things. As a software developer, one of the things that you are required to do is to create software representations of things that exist within the real world. The way in which we do this in software is by creating a software component known as a class. And a class is actually a blueprint. It is a description of the thing that we are trying to model. So if we have a look here at this example, the class here is a car, and the car has some features or some properties, such as the color of the car, the price of the car, the model of the car. So that's the data that we want to store about the car. But in addition to the features or the properties, the car also has some operations that we want the car to perform, such as we want to be able to start the car, we want the car to be able to move forwards. We also want it to be able to reverse or move backwards. And we want the car to be able to stop. So these are the operations. These are the functions that the class can carry out. Now remember, the class is the blueprint. And because the class is the blueprint, it means that we cannot drive the blueprint because the blueprint is just a description of the car. So what we need to do is to actually use the blueprint to create something that is not tangible, something that is concrete. And that thing is known as the object. So note here it says that we create an instance of the class and the instance of the class is known as an object. So if we follow on and we have a look, note that the object has an actual color. So the blueprint, there is actually no color. It was not red or blue, but it had the property color or the feature where we could assign a color to it. However, because the class is not a real thing, we really cannot assign a color as yet. However, once we create an object, we now have the ability to add a color to the object. So this object is red. The price is 23000 Let's say that's USD dollars. And the model in this case is going to be an audit. So just to summarize, the class is the blueprint or a description of something that we want to model in terms of the software that we are using. And an object is the actual thing that we are now going to create using that blueprint. There are also some definitions that we want to get out of the way. Let's start with the concept of a variable. And a variable is a storage container that is able to hold data. Put it another way, a variable is a storage container that is able to hold or store a value. So this value, in this case, would be red for color, or it would be Audi for model. So the variable is color. The value or the data is red. The variable is model. The value is Audi. Now, there are several words that we use to represent variable. So we can call variable data. We can call variables attributes. And we can call variables properties. All of these uh, words are going to be synonymous to each other. Moving forward, we will be using the word properties to represent the variables which are found inside of a class. 
Another thing that we want to define is the term operation. So an operation is some task that can be carried out by the object. And in a similar fashion, there are a few synonyms that may be used in place of the word operation. For example, we can talk about a function, we can talk about a method, we can talk about a behavior. Yeah, so put it another way, an operation is some is something that the object can do, some action that the object can perform. And if we look at our example here, some of our operations, some of our methods are start, starting the car, stopping the car, allowing the car to move forwards and backwards. Now, when we talk about variable, another keyword that comes to mind is the concept of a data type. And a data type is merely a keyword within the language that allows us to be able to describe the value that is being stored. So for example, the value price, 23,000, is a numeric value. In, in programming terminology, we are going to call this an integer because it's a whole number. And this is something that we're going to touch on a bit more. Suffice to say that the keyword that allows us to describe the data to be stored or the value to be stored is going to be called a data type. Another example of data type is this value here. So this value red is actually a string value or a string data type because we're storing text values. Now note that in addition to providing a description of the data that is being stored, the data type also tells us what kind of operations can be performed on that data. And as was mentioned a bit earlier, we are going to touch a bit more on data type as we proceed through the course. Note, however, that we have some data types which are known as primitive data types. And these are the data types that are already baked or built into the language. And we typically have five predominant data types. We have integers, we have real numbers, we have characters, we have strings, and we have booleans. In the C++ language that we are actually using to model these classes and these objects. Integers are called int, that's the keyword in C++. Real numbers are called float, and real numbers are those numbers that contain a decimal portion. Characters are called char, and a character is any single printable element on the keyboard. So once we press the keyboard, and we get some sort of representation, then that thing is known as a character. For example, a letter is a character. A digit, like five, is a character. And a symbol, like the dollar sign, is also a character. We then have strings, and in C++, char, star, so this is the asterisk, so char followed by the asterisk, we call it char star. That is used to represent string values. And string values are text values. For example, your name is a text value. The color red being stored in this format, R-E-D, that's a text value. So that would be stored as a string, as mentioned earlier. And we have another data type known as Boolean, which in C++ is called bool. And this will store a value that is either true or false. So it, it stores one of those values, either the value being true or a value that represents false. There are also going to be those some non-primitive data types. And these are going to be data types which are created by you, the developer. And a class provides us with the ability to create these non-primitive data types. So using the class keyword, we are able to create new data types within the language so that we can adequately represent things. 
that exist in the real world. And as noted here, the blueprint for an object is known as a class. And we're also saying that a class is a non-primitive data type. So this is things that we have already discussed earlier. An object, as we had discussed, is a variable that we create from a class data type. Remember, the class becomes a data type that is created by you, the programmer, or by me, the programmer. And once I create a variable using this class, then that variable becomes an object. So our working definition of a class moving forward is going to be a collection of properties and a collection of methods. So we are using the word properties to represent the features of the class. And we are using the word methods to represent the operations of the class. If we now have a look at the main program, and by the way, the main program is where we are going to put the commands that we want the computer to execute. If there's no command placed inside the main program, then it means that the program will not be able to run. So it's important that we construct the main program. Once again, this is a C++ example. And the main program is signaled by int main. And within the curly brackets, the begin and the end, we now create our objects and we make use of the methods which are associated with these objects. So on line 40, we are creating an object. The object is called my ball. The class is called ball. And then we terminate that command with a semicolon. So we have the class name, we have the object name that follows it, and then we have the semicolon that follows that. And by doing that, we are able to create an object in C++. Please note, very, very important, before we can create the object, we must have created the, the class first because the class is the data type and we need the data type whenever we are actually going to create the object. So the data type is created first and then the object. Given that we have now instantiated an object or we have created an object called my ball, we can now make use of the methods which are found inside that object. Now, the methods are only the methods which would be associated with the class. And in this case, we have an operation or a method called show details that we are making use of. Now note, in order to get access to the method, we need to append a dot to the object. So it is object dot method. So my ball dot show details is actually calling the show details method that is associated with the my ball object. As we say here, the dot operator provides access to the operations or the methods within the object. And we are now displaying the contents of the show details command. So the radius is zero, the area is zero, visible is blank. It says that it is not inflated, so the ball is not inflated. And for color, we're not seeing anything now, it is empty, it is blank. So that is the output that we would have obtained from this main. Now remember, we had indicated that it is important, first of all, to create the class or the blueprint before we create the object. So that's what we are going to be looking at in the, in the next session.